Hello everyone welcome once again to my channel for another useful video the topic of today's presentation is focused on generating awareness about the use of waste biomass as a viable income option so join with me to explore this option i am neelam mishra according to energy and environment scientist there is a pressing need for sustainable fuels to augment and replace traditional fuels due to depleting stocks increasing prices of fossil fuels and climate change crisis biomass has been one of the major energy resources for the mankind ever since the dawn of civilization although its importance diminished after the expansion in use of fossil fuels in the late 19th century it is the only renewable source that can be converted directly into fuel used for cooking and heating purposes since ages but the use of modern biomass implying clean and green fuel is more recent therefore biomass has been attracting attention as an economical and environmentally safe energy source that can provide better carbon balances india is blessed with plenty of biomass resources millions of tons of biomass both primary and secondary accumulate annually from forestry agriculture and various other bio based industries but unfortunately we could not exploit them effectively and efficiently these potential sources of energy are either dumped into landfills or are inefficiently burnt reducing their thermal efficiency and causing extensive pollution to the environment also posing a serious risk to the health and safety of people these biomass resources if used wisely can provide economic opportunities to all stakeholders and also help in reducing waste by proper utilization thankfully government of india is now recognizing and promoting biomass as a source of flexible and sustainable form of renewable energy through phase mandates tax exemption tax incentives and integrated rural development programs new science and technology are allowing for a variety of new uses for by products that used to be thrown away it is important to highlight here that the productive reuse of agriculture waste biomass has been advancing steadily in recent years as a result agro waste management is turning into big business to make agriculture an energy producing enterprise in addition the use of biomass is also strengthening the country's agriculture which is one of the prime contributors in the indian economy bio bricketing is one of the practical ways to solve a problem how to put huge volume of waste from agriculture and agro processing to useful purpose loose biomass is the raw material required in producing briquettes raw material is the beginning of any value chain for the process product so where do we get this loose biomass look around you and there are loads of biomass materials here there and everywhere as depicted in the slide conversion of agro residues like rice husks sawdust cereal stalks etc into high quality densified fuel in the form of briquettes or pallets can provide huge and reliable source of feedstock for thermochemical conversion briquetting technology is easily accessible to farmers to convert the waste biomass into valuable energy for earning additional returns It is notable that biomass briquettes have gained relevance in many projects over recent years in India also such as stove technologies solid fuel boilers and in modern industrial and thermal power plants in addition tea industries wine industries textile industries and farms are the other major sectors using briquettes bio briquettes utilization for power generation through co-firing in the revised biomass policy can be considered as a transition option towards a completely carbon neutral power sector with this overview i am going to elaborate more on briquetting technology the intent of this video is to address bioenergy students or energy professionals who might have thought about starting a business or support business development for the rural people The main points that I will cover are listed in this slide. What is bricketing and its advantages? What are the factors that affect the processes of bricketing and how to make bio briquettes? 
at the end i will also tell you what all you need to start a business in this sector so keep watching the video till the end let me first define the term bricketing bricketing or pelletizing is the process of densification of biomass to produce homogeneous uniformly sized solid pieces of high bulk density low moisture content definite shape which can be conveniently used as a fuel with good burning characteristics briquettes can be produced with a density of 1.2 to 1.4 g per cubic centimeter from loose biomass material with a bulk density of 0.1 to 0.2 g per cubic centimeter in this process the raw material is pressed together at an elevated temperature and forced through an orifice in a pure briquetting process the pressure and temperature make the material bound with the help of its own lignin which acts as a binder in some process utilizing a lower pressure or a lignin poor raw material a separate binding material may be added coming to the advantages of briquetting as mentioned earlier briquetting is a way to make use of biomass residues that would otherwise go waste and replace the use of wood and charcoal as well as fossil fuels thus reducing greenhouse gas emissions briquetting improves the quality of an original fuel material and thereby add value to a poor quality product it results in higher calorific value improves better handling and combustion characteristics and reduces particulate emissions in nutshell briquetting technology enhances energy efficiency and environmental sustainability now let's move on to discuss how to select the raw material what are the criteria in general any loose biomass material that has calorific value but is not in a convenient shape and size or form to be readily usable as fuel is a good candidate for briquetting most of the biomass feed stock possess natural binding agent that allow them to exhibit preferential qualities after densification efficient design and cost effective densification system may improve the feasibility of biomass densification the factors that are often considered to achieve the desired densified bio quality are moisture content ash content flow characteristics particle size and shape and feed stock chemical composition in this section you will understand their effects on briquetting Moisture content in the range of 10 to 15% is preferred because high moisture content will pose problems in grinding and more energy is required for drying. Moisture content in the biomass facilitates starch gelatinization, protein unfolding and fiber solubilization processes during densification. Steam treated biomass is superior to raw biomass because the additional heat modifies the physiochemical properties to the extent that binding between particles is enhanced resulting in improved densification quality. The effect of biomass moisture content on densification can be threefold. It lowers the glass transition temperature, promotes solid bridge formation and increases the contact area of particle by van der Waals force. Next is the ash content of the biomass that affects its slagging behavior together with the operating conditions and mineral composition of ash. Biomass feed stock up to 4% of ash content is preferred for briquetting. Another important characteristic is particle size, shape and distribution. In general, the density and durability of pellets is inversely proportional to the particle size. because smaller particles have greater surface area during densification however very small particles can also lead to jamming of pellet machines and affect production capacity in case of briquette presses bigger particle sizes of more than 6 mm are desirable leading to better interlocking of the particles and increasing the durability the granular homogeneous materials which can flow easily in conveyors bunkers and storage silos are most suitable for briquetting feed box comp- composition is equally important and play significant role in the quality of densified materials raw biomass has both low molecular weight and macro molecular compositions which include starch cellulose hemicellulose and lignin 
Starch behavior is mainly controlled by an irreversible process called gelatinization. It undergoes at high processing temperature. During pelletization, starch acts as a binder but also as a lubricating agent helping to ease the flow of material through the dye. As explained in this slide, protein present in biomass undergoes denaturation on heating during densification process. Fat content in biomass acts as a lubricant during pelletization, increasing throughout and reducing pelletizing pressure. Cellulose by heat treatment becomes more flexible while lignin helps in building solid bridges at elevated temperatures and play a significant role in biomass densification. So this sums up the effect of inherent properties of biomass on densification. Besides these feedstock variables, the quality of the densified product can also be managed by controlling conditions such as manufacturing process, changes in formulation and the use of additives, along with process variables, for example, dye thickness, dye temperature pressure, retention time, steam conditioning and feed rate effect, also affect the quality of the densified biomass, particularly density and durability. And finally, I would like to tell you briefly about the sequential steps involved in bricketing process. There are four steps that are involved in bricketing, collection of raw material, preparation of raw material, compaction, cooling and storage. As shown in the flow diagram, after collection of suitable raw material, preparation is done by drying, size reduction, mixing of raw material with or without binders. Drying can be done in open air or in solar dryers with a heater with hot air. Raw material available in the size range of less than 10 mm need not be sized but large sized raw material is reduced in size by shredding, chopping, crushing, breaking, rolling, hammering, milling, grinding, cutting, etc. until it reaches a suitably small and uniform size in the range of 1 to 10 mm. This is followed by mixing of more than one raw material in proper proportion so that the product should have good compaction and high calorific value. Third step is compaction which takes place inside the bricketing machine which is of three different types, high compaction, medium pressure and low pressure technology. Based on binding material, the biomass densification is divided into two types, binderless technologies and binder based technologies. At the end of the process, briquettes extruding out of the machine are hot with temperatures exceeding 100 degrees centigrade have to be cooled down and stored in dry place. So this brings us to the end of this video. I hope now you have the basic understanding of bricketing technology. If you intend to start a briquette production unit, there are five necessary requirements. Number one. Land area of minimum 1 acre is required to store the raw material for bricketing and produce briquettes. Continuous availability of raw material is a major factor for profitable bricket production. In addition, you also require a drying facility to dry raw material, a shredding machine with minimum of 5 horsepower motor and a bricketing machine. I will elaborate more on the types of bricketing machines, their merits and demerits in the next video. I thank you all for your kind attention and the valuable feedback on my previous videos. Keep watching BioShorts and post thoughtful messages. Thank you once again, take care and stay safe.